Have you ever wondered how an artist got a particular item to look exactly the way it's supposed to? Like for example, if you wanted to paint this tissue paper, how do you get it to look exactly like tissue paper and not, for example, this rag? How can you paint one thing to look like it's supposed to? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. Hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. So sit back and enjoy while I show you how I painted this particular painting of the orange, tissue paper, and glass. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you on the next video. Yes, I was pretty excited to set up a painting uh, utilizing tissue paper. It was something I've been thinking of for quite a while now that I wanted to do. And if you think that's, uh, that's something, I'm currently working on uh, setting up a setup using uh, some cellophane. So that should be real interesting to paint. Uh, make sure you look for um, some of my future videos and I'll be showcasing that particular painting when it's done and complete and the video is ready. So I was working on the orange and uh, the orange came out awesome. I thought it just came out as the quintessential orange. I just thought of the colors that I had put in there. Um, I made sure I used the cadmium orange. Uh, I used cadmium yellow light. I used lemon yellow hue. And for the shadow area on that orange, I used ultramarine violet, which uh, contrasted nicely and gave a really nice dark shadow on that orange. Came out great. And I was working on the when I was working on the glass and the background, well, pretty much all of it together, the tissue paper, the glass, the background, they all had elements of gray in it. And it was just how did I want to vary that gray? So I knew that the glass, from looking at it on my setup, it was uh, it had a distinct um, uh, color to it as opposed to the the grayish hues that I was seeing in the tissue paper. And the background that I used, that was just a, a black felt background that I had set up. So um, that had just that was just basic, the lighter areas were just your basic gray. So I pretty much used ivory black and titanium white for that. But then I realized that it kind of clashed with the tissue paper because I was also using those same colors in my tissue paper and I didn't want the background and the tissue paper just all meld together it just wouldn't have made any sense so what I ended up doing is I ended up warming up the background by putting in some asphaltum which the asphaltum that I use uh, is Richeson's asphaltum and it has a kind of a yellow base to it and that kind of worked out nicely because it went along well with the colors that I utilized in the orange. Even though you don't see any yellow in the background, it's relatively dark. Um, but it, it, it was a warm, dark value. So that worked out well. And for the tissue paper, I continued with the, the ivory black and the titanium white and various shades thereof of those two colors, just kind of going back and forth you making all these little patterns and the glass I used the um, Payne's gray uh, for the glass with mixtures of titanium white and the Payne's gray has a bluish hue to it whereas the ivory black the ivory black does not have um, well it might it does have a bluish hue to it as well but it's it's more, I think it, the ivory black kind of leans more towards the red value as far as uh, if you're going to look at it, you know, if you're going to make a comparison side by side of the two colors. I'd say one one is leans more towards red, the paint's gray leans, definitely leans towards blue. So I knew that these two grays would work well together at, you know, in opposition to each other. And so that was the way I went with that. So to make the tissue paper look like tissue paper, 
I had to really look at my setup and look at the angles of the paper. Now the paper itself isn't transparent like the cellophane that I'll be working on in, the, uh, in a future painting. That's completely transparent. You can see right through it. This tissue paper, you there is a transparency to it, but it's not clear. It's a uh, very, you know, opaque transparency. So you have to kind of have that come across. Now, if you'll notice in the front of the orange, um, onto the, the right side front orange, there is some tissue paper there that you could see that orange color coming through. So what I ended up doing is I ended up taking that color orange and mixing it with the gray and utilizing that color on the where I was painting the tissue paper to give it that appearance that you could see orange through that tissue paper. And so it really, you know, like like it always is in painting, you're creating an illusion. And so that illusion that you're seeing through that paper is pretty much the, what I wanted to get. And the other thing uh, was, you you know, th there's so many angles, and uh, you know, because I crinkled up the tissue paper pretty good, and I just kind of formed it into the shape that I thought was, you know, a, a decent looking shape for my setup. And so I needed to show all of those those angles. And here's where the um, you're not really 100% sure when you're doing this, you know, okay, it's like, which which part of the, the edges, because there's so many sharp edges on this, which part of these edges do you want to make soft? Which, you know, which edges do you need to, you know, make them hard? So basically what it comes down to is the, all the edges around your focal point, you're going to want to make sharp. So you have to key in on that focal point area. In this particular painting, the orange is not the focal point. It could be, but that's not what I chose at the beginning of the painting. I actually pointed my light at the very top of the tissue paper above the glass so that the light actually wasn't pointing directly at the orange. So that's why that highlight on the orange is not very white. It's uh, kind of more of a yellowish color, that highlight. And it, that highlight is not the strongest bright area or light area on the painting. So just above the corner, if you look at the back corner of that glass, right above that is the area that I chose to be my focal point. Now you may argue, oh, you know, that's so, it, it's very high on the, on the painting. Um, it might take the viewer's eye right off the painting itself but what I did was in my mind I made that the main focal point and the secondary focal point would be the orange it is the most colorful thing in the painting itself I mean here you're dealing with all kinds of blacks and grays and, and lighter values and then you have this orange right there so that could be a secondary focal point and that's what I'm hoping on and I really kind of like the way it worked out so that's how I went with this painting that's how I chose to attack it and uh, you know anybody else they could you know could have done it a different way and I'm sure it would have worked out just fine you know so um, the next thing I had to worry about was um, is the orange reflecting onto the glass so I have some orange coming through the tissue paper, and there is some orange that is reflecting on that face of the glass that's closest to the orange. So I was concerned that I, you know, how bright or or dark should I make that particular orange? You know, from what I was seeing in my setup, you know, when I'm sitting there, kept looking at it, it really wasn't a very clear reflection. You could see some orange, the color orange, but it wasn't very bright. It wasn't, you know, it didn't, it didn't like pop out at you. You just knew it was there. So that's kind of how I wanted to approach it on the painting as well. I wasn't interested in making the reflecting orange 
in the glass to be something that the viewer was distracted by. So I just wanted it kind of subtle there. So, so you'll notice I do have a little bit of orange in the bottom already on this painting at this point. And then I go about to actually putting in uh, the orange on the glass later. Now here I am working on these edges and I was having a difficult time trying to really um, get the paper, the tissue paper, to really come across as tissue paper in the painting. You can, you kind of get the idea. I'm not 100% sure that I uh, was successful in demonstrating that it actually looks like tissue paper. Um, it definitely looks like paper, but I don't think it comes across as tissue paper. It could be, you know, just like a plain white piece of paper, except for that area in front of the orange where you can see the orange coming through the tissue paper. That would probably be the only area that kind of gives away the fact that it has some sort of transparency. So is this, is this painting successful in that area? Yes, I definitely came across as it's paper. Um, there are some areas that do read as tissue paper and uh, when I do another item like this with tissue paper, I will be better prepared to uh, work it as a painting and be a lot more successful. So really with each attempt, you know, I might have, you know, you could say I failed in that area, but I failed, you know, better. So each time you paint something, you want to fail better until eventually you're just, you know, it is as good as it's going to be. Now again, if you look at the glass, you can see where I put the that highlighted, or not highlighted, but the reflecting orange on the glass. Um, so you can tell it's there, but it's not, you know, it's not something that's, you know, that, that sticks right out in your mind. So I was happy with this, and I hope you enjoyed it. For coaching and information on how to move your painting to the next level, make sure you give me a call at area code 607-481-9442. That's area code 607-481-9442. And make sure you visit my website at kennethbrandt.com. And while you're there, sign up for my email newsletter and be uh, placed into a drawing for a free painting. So again, remember, visit KennethBrandt.com and call area code 607-481-9442.